The Earth, our blue planet. It is water that gives this colour to the Earth. It took a long history of 4,560 million years for our planet to become the way it is now. Water for the future. Two main factors determine the dynamics of the Earth. The energy of the Sun and inner heat of the Earth, which is released during decomposition of radioactive elements in its entrails. It is believed that due to these factors, the planet Earth and life in it will continue to exist approximately for another five billion years. Having penetrated the filter of the atmosphere, solar energy eats the surface of the Earth, affects the weather, and fosters the circulation of water, erosion of the Earth's surface, and the formation of sedimentary rocks. As a result of reactions that take place in the core of the Earth, and due to the force of gravity, rocks slide and merge, convection currents are formed, and thus the surface of the Earth moves. Volcanoes erupt, earthquakes occur, mountains rise, ocean cavities sink, and a new crust of earth is formed full of mineral deposits so necessary for human beings. The planet Earth was born four and a half billion years ago. The constantly changing ball of fire gradually cooled down. At first there was no atmosphere around it. Asteroids falling onto the earth and abundant eruptions provided conditions for the formation of water vapor, ammonium and methane and later compounds of nitrogen, hydrogen and oxygen. These compounds in their turn formed various oxides, the most important of which was carbon dioxide. This was a process of gradual formation of the atmospheric layer which protects the earth and prevents destruction of any life on earth by disastrous radiation of the sun. Water and everything that had melted in it filled the tremendous depressions of the earth paving the way for the rain of oceans. During the long period of evolution, which lasted more than two and a half billion years, and provided conditions favorable for formation of life in water, the first single-celled organisms emerged. Multicellular organisms appeared almost three billion years later. These organisms evolved, moved onto land, and up into the air. It took another half a billion years for the first primitive man to appear on our planet. And today, water is the essential natural resource that sustains life on Earth. No form of life would survive without water. Water is the most important constituent of any organisms. Almost 60% of tree weight is comprised of water. The amount of water in animals ranges from 65% to 80%. Two-thirds of the human body also consists of water. By the way, our brains are made up of approximately 75% of water, 22% in our bones, and even 83% in our blood. Any defensive system of human beings uses water for food digestion, dissolution and transference of nutrients into blood, and the elimination of wasteful and harmful materials from the body. Also, water controls the body temperature. Man can survive several weeks without food, but only a couple of days without water. Water in our planet is everywhere. In the oceans, lakes, rivers, underground, soil, and the atmosphere. It takes up to 71% of the Earth's surface. It is due to the abundance of water that astronauts see the Earth from outer space as the blue planet. 95% of its water is contained in the oceans and seas. The remaining 5% is fresh water, but 4% is contained in the glaciers of both poles. Accordingly, we have only 1% of fresh water of rivers, lakes and atmosphere and soil. Only 3 hundredths of a percent of water is easily accessible to men. This tiny part of all fresh surface water and groundwater that can be reached by means of our current technical facilities. A certain amount of fresh water also accumulates in the atmosphere and clouds. 
However, mankind would use this up in just 10 days. Water is in constant movement. Snow that falls, as well as a surplus of rain, form small and large lakes, seas and oceans. The majority of water flows down rivulets and rivers. Raindrops penetrate through sand and clay layers and accumulate under the earth's surface in limestone clefts and pores, thus creating a repository, a groundwater layer. Under the impact of the sun, wind and air streams, vapour rises from the earth's surface, meadows, trees and water bodies. More than 350 cubic kilometres of water evaporate each day from the land, rivers, lakes, seas and oceans in our planet, forming clouds, temporary storages of water. Water in clouds is continuously looking for particles in combination with which it falls down in the form of rain or snow, and then starts a new cycle of water. This closed cycle is called the natural hydrological cycle. Though the annual amount of precipitation in the form of rain and snow is sufficient, the distribution of it in the entire surface of the Earth differs. In some parts of our planet, precipitation is very heavy. The consequences of showers and hurricanes tend to be more and more catastrophic. As a result, severe floods devastate houses, bridges, roads, arable fields and crops, and take thousands of human lives. During recent years, natural calamities have been frequent guests in Lithuania as well. Hundreds of houses, farmsteads, vast areas of crops were flooded. The financial losses of people who survived the disasters amount to millions. On the other hand, however, there are places on the earth that do not see rain several years in a row. In one of the severest wastelands in the world, the Atacama Desert in Chile, not a single drop of rain falls for several years. The desert is dominated by salty fields and instead of sand, the wind carries dried salt. In such deserts, not only plants or animals, but also human beings feel the shortage of water. Huge amounts of water are required in dry areas for watering agricultural crops. If people living upstream a lot of water for intensive agricultural activities, the downstream inhabitants soon start lacking it. Thus a water crisis emerges and conflicts rise, not only between the inhabitants of upstream and downstream, but also between states. Over one billion people of our planet do not have safe drinking water. In Africa, many people do not have enough clean water, even for the preparation of food. We cannot even think about adequate sanitary conditions or the reduction of poverty without water. In Lithuania, fresh groundwater is used in household activities. We use it at home, in the industrial processes of enterprises, for agricultural purposes as well as for drinking, the preparation of food, washing and laundering. The daily consumption of water for household purposes in Lithuania is about 50 to 70 litres per person. We wash ourselves and our clothes, bathe and swim in swimming pools full of clean, transparent water without giving a single thought of from where and how this water reaches us. Special drilling equipment is used to be able to reach the deep artesian layers. Such artesian boreholes of fresh water can be as deep as 300 metres and those of mineral water can reach even more than one kilometre. Water, lifted with the help of pumps, is sent to various water reservoirs. From there it is further transported along pipes to water supply systems and reaches our taps. Drinking water is supplied to the majority of our cities and larger settlements from a 
of artesian bores, which are called well fields. In larger cities, centralised water systems are developed, which supply drinking water to the population. The owners of older houses still often use pressure taps put up on the street for several households. From a chemical point of view, water is a simple compound of oxygen and hydrogen. At the same time, however, it is a universal solvent. People have learned to use this quality in thousands of ways, and so the demand for water, both in household and industrial activities, is huge. We cannot imagine our life without water, but at the same time we pollute it. Some of the pollutants dissolve in water. Meanwhile, other parts of various undissolved waste, together with water, are discharged into sewers. The water becomes heavy, changes its colour and taste, and acquires a bad smell. The water, which was recently crystal clear, is now called wastewater. Wastewater must be cleaned. Therefore, polluted water is directed along sewerage pipes to water treatment facilities. The pollution of water is easy but its treatment is a very expensive and long process. Let's follow the route of water in a complex wastewater treatment facility. First of all, water goes through mechanical filters, which catch larger pieces of waste. After that, it is directed to big ponds, where sand and small impurities settle. Then the water is introduced into aeration tanks, where oxygen is added to the water. Huge air pumps blow in air to mix with the water. Meanwhile, live bacteria break down organic pollutants, and even oil. However, if any hazardous chemical materials happen to be mixed with the wastewater, the chemicals destroy the useful bacteria and the water is not properly treated. Consequently, the process lasts longer, as new bacteria need to be grown, and inadequately treated water has to be returned to the aeration tanks again. From the aeration tanks, the water moves to the final sedimentation ponds, where it settles and the sediment sludge is removed. So, finally, the treated water may be returned back to rivers. Now it is clean again. Lithuania is a marine country. Its sandy beaches are washed by the Baltic Sea. Due to the enclosed nature and slow water circulation, and according to its size and the amount of water, the Baltic Sea is considered to be a small sea, and thus it is very sensitive to any intrusion by man. Nine industrial states are located around the Baltic Sea. 200 rivers flow into this sea, including the largest in Lithuania, the Nemenis which reaches the Baltic Sea through the Koronian Lagoon. The Nemenis, like rivers of other countries, such as the Dogova, Odra, Narva and the Neva, conveys poorly treated wastewater. In addition to municipal agricultural and industrial waste, a large number of oil and war industry products have entered the Baltic Sea. According to environmentalist calculations, the annual amount of oil products entering the Baltic Sea reaches 2,000 tonnes. Oil rapidly spreads out over the surface of the sea and inflicts great harm to living organisms. After the Second World War, many containers with dozens of tons of poisonous materials were sank into the Baltic Sea. As a result of corrosion of these tanks, all the toxic materials that are dangerous to human health could get into the water. This would be a huge ecological disaster. Today, the pollution of the Baltic Sea has become a global problem. It is one of the most polluted seas in the world, 